Hello and welcome to the Rapid Power Podcast, where we ask Power Addicts some power platform and some non-power platform questions. Now, let's get started. Welcome to episode five of Rapid Power Podcast. Um, today we have two amazing guests, guests from the Microsoft team. Um, so our first guest for today is Brian Dang. He's a senior program manager at, with the PowerCat team. Uh, thanks for joining us, Brian. Thanks for having me. And our second guest is uh, Samir Bhangar, uh, who is a principal program manager with the PowerCat team. And I would like to give him a title of the, the storyteller. So thanks for joining us. <laughs> thanks for having us on your amazing podcast, Vivek. Uh, sure. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be, there are a good set of questions here, uh, thought-provoking questions. Uh, so it'll be fun uh, to see uh, what all of us come up with uh, our answers. In. All right. So without further ado, uh, let's start off with the, uh, the Power Platform questions first. And we'll do three of those, then we'll do some non-power platform questions, and there'll be a bonus one, which you guys don't know about. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's start off with the power platform one. Um, so what is one of the most memorable moments that uh, you recall that was related to power platform or the community, um, which like you really remember, <laughs> you won't forget. So Brian? You know, of course, there's always a ton. I'd say there's been some sentimental moments back in 2018's Microsoft Business Application Summit. I mean, that's the time when I met in person uh, some of the people that I had been wanting to see for a long time. Um, I'd say there was a moment uh, when on the Sunday before things got started where Summit came to share his story on stage. And... Uh, Afterwards, um, the, the, as soon as I saw him, like he came up to me and, I, and we both gave each other the, the longest hug uh, that I've ever received. <laughs> it's like we've known each other for so many years, only through this, this, uh, this internet. Uh, and on that same day, uh, after, that, after that talk, Chris Mankayo from the, from the controls team and Power Apps controls team, uh, who I had never seen in person before was reminding me about how he got started at Power Apps, and we were talking about the video that was that that I had hopped on a call with James Phillips on, and uh, he actually shared the video with me. Like I got to rewatch that, so it was a, probably one of the most sentimental days of my entire Power Platform history. Nice, nice. And that, that's, yeah, I mean, the, it's always kind of, um, I mean, there, as you said, there are a lot of these, right? It's kind of hard to pick one, but yeah, there are some which just you won't ever forget. So yeah, it's a, it's a good memory. What about you, Samir? I think there are, there are too many, Vivek. I think when you say pick <laughs> the most, so I was going to, before I jump in, I can pick one. How, it, is it really just one or can I do two? I did too. I'll give you. You are the <laughs> you're a storyteller, so we'll give you two. You know, I, I think the there are really many. One that's uh, I want to riff off of what Brian said about that Embass 2018. But before that, the, somehow Embass has been these moments, especially with the this community and the platform that have really struck out. There was the Microsoft Business Application Summit 2019, where we did the the Hack for Good, which was organized by you know, then TDG and a few people kind of by the community for the community event. Uh, I'd helped a little bit in getting that, just getting that going. But there was a moment where there were all these people who had connected over Twitter and mostly online that were all there in one room at one place. Um, and for me, it was particularly uh, special because it felt like people in the, let's say, the power platform world that I knew through different connections, right? Like I knew the the SNCF team from France because we had worked with them from a PowerCat team and done a story or Nick Gill from the Red Cross. And then there was one of the teams was building a solution that might help the Red Cross and then people from Twitter and the community. So these different worlds sort of come together. Um, 
And I remember the comment that Louise Fries, I believe, made that day where she said, she's like, oh my God, it's like my entire Twitter feed is in the room at the same time or so, something like that, which really st stood out. Like that was that was fun. And that one photo we took at the end probably captured that uh, a bit. The idea of them all, you know, many of the, them hadn't met in person um, was quite meaningful. And then I'll just add in one more, that 2018 MBAS, and this is a, it's kind of a weird side side thing. It's not even a, we were, it was when Keith and uh, Martin and uh, Vanessa from Standard Bank of, you know, a bunch of them, people had come here and we were first, I mean, personally for me, it was the first time where I was hosting something like this. And I was told you have, you know, we had been prepping and we had five hours of customer story sessions. We had anyway, invited people over. Uh, there was a moment the Saturday before. So event was Monday. Uh, prep day was Sunday. Saturday, people came into town Friday. Saturday, we went around Seattle and Mehdi showed up in his van. And I think it was Mehdi's van and my car and we were driving folks around. There was one moment where we were going to go drop people off. We were all saying bye. I just so clearly remember Mehdi's van door was open. A um, few five of us where we were chatting. And we said, okay, we're, basically we started to say bye, right? Uh, I think maybe an hour or hour and a half later, everyone was still standing outside that van door, you know, still chatting away. And it was all about, and we, I, I felt like from our perspective, we weren't even saying much. It was everyone like excited about, this is what I'm doing with Power Apps. Here's what I'm doing here. Here's what I'm doing in South Africa. Here's what I'm doing in France. Um, just that seeing that, and now I feel like we've been spoiled to be honest, like, you know, we've seen so, there's so much of that that happens, but each one is actually pretty special. And for me, maybe it was, feeling that you know at the one of the first times that that actually happened in person so you know in california we call it the parking lot crew when you hang out there but law enforcement calls it loitering <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's not even that far it's like in queen anne here i mean i can walk down i saw it's near this view spot where you see the space needle um that we have i should share some pictures later of that so anyway that that's a couple that i had vivek Nice. Great question. So my memory is also tied to the MBAS, and that's the 2019 <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, but there was this specific moment which um, it's kind of, you know, uh, my wife calls it like you you, f you see yourself kind of. It's like a out of the body kind of moment that you have. So I, I mean, I always re re kind of when I look back at it, I remember it that way that I see myself with a group of people. So this was one of the, the nights um, after, like it was the first or second day of MBAS and uh, a bunch of us, uh, I mean, this was my first event where I got to meet so many people from my Twitter feed. <laughs> um, so we we went to this uh, ice cream place, which is the, the place where they make the ice cream in front of you, kind of, the using the nitrogen thing. Um, and for a lot of people, it was like a first time experience. And, um, so we, I, know, I remember Simon, Manuela, Gita, a lot of others were also there. And after we got that, we were just sitting outside the ice cream parlor. I mean, there was just like some staircase and we were sitting there talking, chatting. And that moment feels, and at that moment I felt like, look at us. I mean, we didn't know each other. Um, we just knew each other from like hanging out on Twitter or some virtual hangouts and now it's just all of us sitting um, together and enjoying ice cream and that it, it felt very like surreal then that okay this is happening right so so I, I always recall that moment I mean I know it, it wasn't the first moment when we when I met all of them but it was just a moment this is because that is something which I enjoy with a lot of my close friends just hang out with them going having ice cream and this is more related to India, I think, than US. But yeah, so yeah, that's one of the most memorable moments for me. Yeah, one thing in common besides MBAS is these are like really sentimental moments. Yeah. And so like how some of them, like they all are, they're not necessarily, I was on stage at this point, you know, presenting to this large audience type thing. Then they're all these one-off type of, it happened in the corner after a session, you know, that, that we remember an ice cream shop, interesting. <laughs> 
wish we get to you know, relive these memories <laughs> soon. <laughs> yeah. All right, Brian, what question do you have? All right. I got a question. What would your daily work look like without the power platform? I could shoot this off to Samir first. Um, I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> the ghosts were all of us. I don't know. I, oh, work God, for that. Uh, I think so. Let me see. I interpret that in a few different ways when I hear it. One is that, you know, if the um, let's just take the more tactical, like, you know, using it for automation and processes in my work, right? And whether I'm working at Microsoft, anywhere else, kind of how, do, how is it used? Um, and I think there's certainly in our own systems, I mean, we talk about communities and programs and things we run, we're, you know, using, I go in even just this morning, went in and look at who our sort of a CRM system, who's there, you know, have a little model driven app. Uh, we're thinking of, you know, we're constantly writing flows. I just yesterday went and edited a, so one of the things I used to, these are like small things that spend so much time on. It's like I have, Pratap and I are admins on some SharePoint site and we keep getting access and we want to send an automated response because people don't really shouldn't have access to that site. But here are the key links that you should read. Right. And we used to I was manually copy pasting something into an email and he's written up a flow for it that makes it super easy, which saves us time. Right. So, again, something small, but I would say so that's all time savings. Mm -hmm. um, but in a probably a broader context, if I understand that, um, I think, I mean, it, it, I, I'd probably be looking for a similar sort of, without knowing it, um, uh, if I think of job, like a commute, you know, thing that can really combine my experience and background of what I've done in the past, let's say with product and technology, along with the ability to connect with people, to connect people with each other where possible, and be able to share maybe uh, like a, there's like you mentioned a storytelling angle that I you know enjoy. Maybe it's not so much part of it has to do with the actual writing, but it's less about writing and trying to identify. And somehow a bunch of those things have come together in in one role, and I get paid for it. And so that grateful for that. Some of it I'd probably do even if I didn't get paid for it. So that that's what uh, I would go try and seek something like that uh, maybe elsewhere. Nice. So the way I looked at it, um, again, I wouldn't have a job, but the way I look at it is I have this job because of our platform. Um, so yeah, you if, have a new if job. I was, yeah, I do. I just started this uh, two weeks ago. So I'm fully invested in Power Platform now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if I wasn't, so I look at it as if I wasn't doing Power Platform, what would I have done? Um, so I was into marketing and I think I would have kind of continued that, but maybe I would have gone into marketing of some platform like this um, because I've always been like, because I had an electrical engineering degree, I always thought I want to be close to electrical in, like engineering company doing a marketing there. Uh, but I feel like I'm, I have this love for IT or just kind of development or making things. So if not for a platform, it would have been some other platform um, where I might have done marketing or I might have switched to, again, a local developer. Um, but I'm happy that Microsoft came up with Power Platform. <laughs> yeah. Aren't we all lucky? <laughs> uh, let's see. What would it be for me? Well, I like the way that you both interpreted the question. I interpreted it like uh, time travel. You know, if this thing just never existed, it would be, I would still be in the classroom. <laughs> I, would, uh, I would be using Microsoft Excel and still building stuff on there and probably getting deeper into macros and VBA. Um, I would be trying to solve those kinds of problems. Um, and then let's assume that COVID-19 were still here, we're, we're still about to happen. That's when I would leave the classroom actually uh, and, and try to uh, create solutions for teachers at that time. So I would eventually still leave the classroom if, if the rest of history uh, panned out. One other thing that um, 
really came about is my, my group of friends have always been photographers. You know, I did photography back then, photographers and teachers. So those are my two groups. Um, but within those two groups, I never knew anybody who like loved Excel. I just knew zero people. Nobody liked technology to the same level. And it's because of Power Platform that I have met people who who love solving problems and geeking out like I do. You don't know, I, I can't explain how much that means to me, to, to meet somebody who has this passion of being a geek. <laughs> like we geek out about cameras and stuff, but it's it's not the same. <laughs> You're talking about geeking out, it's just giving me goosebumps here. <laughs> <laughs> Your, geek uh, bumps. The to totally side tangent, but the, when you describe about time travel, it reminds me of like my daughter and I recently had started talking about this idea and it goes off into some word of philosophical la la land. But, you know, that every point when you make a A B decision that there's a I, I, I don't know if it's called the multiverse concept or something like that, but she she keeps describing it as she's 11 years old as, oh, this is happening in the multiverse, right? There is the, the Brian in the multiverse that did not go down the power platform route or didn't exist. And there are all these and it, infinite threads that uh, span out. So this, this is just one of those threads in the multiverse. But into anyway. the dataverse. Into the dataverse. <laughs> 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 so and and then my kids say okay this our brain hurts when we do stuff like this let's play uno to get grounded again in reality <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that's funny all right so i mean what question do you have okay so my question is um who is someone that in your circle friends family acquaintances co-workers who's not who who you would love to see kind of embrace power platform do something with it uh, yeah. that, that isn't yet using it. And when we start with you, Vivek. So I, so this happened to my father, actually. So I, I would like my father to learn it more. Um, like one time he attended some AI kind of conference, something virtual, um, and he was asking, can I do something like this? Like he was, he was discussing with me about the AI stuff. And he was talking about this invoice processing that they would have shown in the conference. I was like, I can teach you how to do that. Um, and so I have a personal tenant and I kind of, uh, we did some desktop sharing. It was a, uh, it was because he, he's still using Windows, I think seven and there's everything old in his applications. So it was something was going wrong with power apps um, and it wasn't loading correctly. Um, so I, I really wish that I could teach him more. Um, so that's like my goal when I go to India, that I'll spend some time just teaching him some power platform and uh, AI builder. Like he talks to me about, he, he manages his own business. He still does it part time, but like throughout his life, he has, a, he has had his own business and he still uses all these Excel and documents and all that. I was like, if I could have built, like if I knew Power Platform, then I would have built a, like a CRM for you. And it would have been so much easier for you to manage your contacts and invoices, quotes and all that kind of things. So I, I mean, if I show him now, I'm pretty sure he'll be more interested and I would like him to learn more. So we'll keep him more busy as well. <laughs> Does he have a Twitter handle? He doesn't. <laughs> so maybe that's Actually, yeah. wait, wait. I don't know what I'm thinking. He probably does. <laughs> he's on LinkedIn. He's on Twitter. He, yeah, I, I think he does, but I don't think he follows me though. <laughs> yes, maybe we'll have to follow him and then see when he posts the tweet of that app that you help him build. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Didn't we sign somebody up for Twitter at the last Ignite? <laughs> of course we did. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Well, for me, Brian, you know, yeah. by chance, um, it's also my dad. Like, I, I didn't, I didn't notice about you, Vivek. Well, my dad was working in construction for for all his life. He would, he, he eventually uh, started his own company in construction, and he would write these invoices. 
by he would write these invoices. I meant <laughs> the kids would. My dad doesn't speak English very well. I mean, he speaks English, but uh, when it comes to documents and, and technology and printing, uh, you know, it's it's not his strength. He didn't really grow up with it. Um, and so I, I, I always wanted to replace the way that he did invoices inside Excel. It's very, you know, you got these weird cells and and it's hard to understand exactly where they go. Um, but he was very, he had always been resistant. Okay, uh, why are you showing me this, right? That's one more thing that I have to, to know about. Um, and I did eventually discover, you know, Project Sienna and then eventually Power Apps. But by that time, he had already retired. Uh, he retired early and he was having a lot of back pains. Um, so I never got to the point where I created, you know, power apps and and flows for him. Um, but if, you know, if in a different multiverse, uh, that that would be certainly a scenario. <laughs> Samir? Yeah. So my, <clears throat> it's funny, I had thought of my dad was one option that showed up. I actually <laughs> then so, random side tangent. When I shared uh, Brian, your story with my dad, who's very interested in all of um, all of these stories, uh, he reminded me that his name when he was a kid was actually Brian. Like what he was called in the community before, now his name is Vijay, but it was called Brian amongst the local community there for some reason. So anyway, random <laughs> random connection. Um, I th I thought of my brother. So my, my younger brother had, he, you know, he decided college wasn't really for him um, and he had gone on a, different path and eventually taught himself programming on his own and um, ended up, uh, you know, doing a lot with HTML, JavaScript, and then he's got, you know, since then, then he took on many different projects. His most recent one was also working with uh, the Red Cross, with the International Red Cross to build some of their data platforms. So anyway, he's been on a quite different a bit more of a non-traditional trajectory. But one thing consistently through it while I was at Microsoft is that he's been a complete Linux person, like non, um, you know, non-Microsoft at all. Like he was even the first thing you get with his laptop is get rid of Windows from it and put Linux on. Um, and he had an adopt. And whenever I keep telling him, why don't you, back in the day when I was doing things with .NET, he wasn't quite interested. Um, but more recently, He's actually funny, it's all come in circle. He just two weeks ago sent me a note around how he's gotten quite involved with Azure and he's actually gonna be doing a project with Microsoft related to some AI project. So I just feel like having him now also add on Power Apps and Power Platform and get excited about that would, uh, I, I, I'd love to go back and, and tell him, see, I, I told you so, you know, you'll eventually, uh, <laughs> eventually adopt this stuff. Um, so anyway, he's he he came he, he's the one who came to mind for me. Um, we all need the time machine. <laughs> yeah. No. All right. So we that was some really good discussion. Uh, and though it we called it Power Platform, it was more of our memories or things that wasn't about the product. It was what kind of memories we have created around the product, right? Um, so that was interesting. Yeah, I mean, I've only had technical geeky? questions. <laughs> Are we not being geeky enough for this for, for the podcast? <laughs> we need to throw in some well, we'll, uh, I guess the next question that I have on the non-power platform stuff may be a bit geeky. So, uh, what apps or tools, or not even apps, uh, do you use to stay organized? It could be something that you use a notebook or anything like that. But what generally do you stay to keep yourself organized? What do you, Brian? Sure, I could start. Uh, well, I'll share two tips and then two things that I use. Two tips. One tip is I, I use this new feature inside Outlook Online called the pin. You could pin an email and it sticks at the top of your inbox. Uh, so it never never disappears until you, you finish it. <laughs> um, and then another thing inside uh, Outlook Online is the like button. You know, sometimes you just want to tell somebody, I read this email or, you know, give, acknowledge it. Well, that like button is only in a Outlook mail online. I haven't seen it in the Outlook desktop. So it's another another huge benefit. So something you should consider trying. Yeah. 
And then uh, the, the two tools that I like to use, planner, the most underrated thing ever. I mean, we all, we all love Microsoft to do and uh, you know, Wonderlist that predated it, but, but planner has more organization on top of it. You know, you got these, these buckets, um, which one day I hope Microsoft to do you know, I think I, I think they're bringing some of the experiences together, but I hope it um, it improves. And then Microsoft Bookings. You know, if I want somebody to grab some time with me instead of going back and forth, saying I'm available at this time and I'm available at this time, you just send them your bookings link, and then they can just grab some time with you. Super super easy. Cool, oh, nice. Uh, that's some cool tips over there. I didn't know about the Outlook Online stuff at all. Yeah. How about you, Samir? So I'm re I'm really bad at staying organized. Like I, when you <laughs> asked me this question, uh, my first yeah is is uh, I wish I'm not I saying had I'm a successful. Better, yeah, <laughs> I wish I had a better to do system, and I keep trying different systems. And anyway, the but the ones so a um, I'm a big fan of OneNote, and I use OneNote quite a bit. And the search in OneNote works amazingly well for me, so I don't need to you know always have things in these well curated hierarchies I can find them but so that's one the others I actually I was thinking I like keeping for some things like really clear folder structures and having a system so I know for some of these speaking of you know stories or just having like very clear this is one folder per customer has the customer name you know blah hyphen blah customer name dash or organization name dash person name is how we should organize it and I like like keeping some simple systems like that um two more that i'll add in quickly is one is for some things uh, paper notes so even now as we're chatting here i think you know keeping having a little rough pad a little old school uh key things i'll keep in, in these notes around my desk um and the last one is uh to make sure i actually get some important things done is is i rely on human beings um uh, like my, I, I know if something is important enough, at some point my manager will come and nag me, Saurabh will come and nag me for it. So I rely on that happening for me to actually get important, make sure I don't forget important things. But, and I'm I'm half joking, it's actually true. I think I, I you know, working within a team environment, I actually rely on others coming and having that conversation to keep me on track almost. And I know <laughs> others will come and find me if there's important stuff that I'm missing. Right. Samir knows OneNote so well that there's there's shortcut keys I never even knew existed. You know, like uh, modifying tables. Yeah. Samir knows them all. <laughs> so uh, shortcut key, shortcut tip that is super serious. useful is all, this is across OneNote, Word, and other things. Anytime you have a bullet li list or sections, and I thought everyone knew this, but it's like, you know, how these things go, Alt, Shift, Up, Down is like a lifesaver in terms of time. And it'll just help like you- Video move. game combo. <laughs> it'll help you move like bullet point, bullet lists and things like that, like reorganize things without having to keep copy pasting, just Alt Shift up and down. Yeah, anyway, over oh, to you. Mike. I'll try it out next time, yeah. So for me, um, I wanted to kind of categorize it into one is my work stuff and one is my personal stuff. Um, so for work emails, I follow, zero inbox and I've used uh, Luis Fries's kind of blog post on that. Um, so I kind of modified it a little bit, but basically all my emails, I, I look at them only like two or three times in a day. Um, and an email is either like I read it right then, I put it in the red bucket, uh, read later. That, so I have quick steps for that. And then there's a to-do bucket. So the to-do is also I have like quick steps for um, today, tomorrow, this week, next week, this month, next month. So if, I mean, everything has to be either, there has to be some action taken on it or it can be read and archived. So I, I follow that and I mean, right now also I am, I sometimes have like five or six emails, but otherwise generally it's zero. <laughs> um, so I, I, I use that a lot and then kind of tags, kind of um, connected to that, I use to do, um, but I use to do the the, uh, the desktop app for my work stuff. So I, I mean, generally I don't even go into the to do app. I just use it in my Outlook task. It shows up there as well uh, on the site. So my mail kind of shows me everything. Um, and then for my personal stuff, 
I have my personal tenant because to do doesn't work that well with two accounts together. You have to keep switching and the mobile app doesn't even have the, the option to switch between uh, two accounts. So I use that um, and I have my wife set up as well on my personal tenant. So we share tasks, we assign it to each other and that has worked out really well for us. And even if we have to do something on a monthly basis, a lot of times she'll just tell me, okay, can you do that for me? I'll, I'll be like, I have added you now, you can. <laughs> <laughs> we share a folder, do it and assign it to yourself. So she's been using that as well. So yeah, uh, to do is kind of my one stop shop now for doing everything. But yeah, Outlook and to do zero inbox and managing tasks and out uh, to do. So that's how I try to stay organized. I don't Sounds stay like you organized. Gotta figure it out. In in some alternate multiverse, I'm like this. I have this great organization structure that I uh, maybe I'll get to someday. But no, that's I'm envious of uh, of good organization structures, especially things that I've tried for years and haven't quite quite landed. So, no, yeah. it sounds. But yeah, as I mentioned one thing in the end, I try to stay organized. It doesn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. All right, Brian. What do you? Have? All right. I got a question. So we've seen members of our community have hidden talents outside of tech. So you got people like Donna Sarkar, who's a fashion designer. Uh, Manuela does knitting, uh, and she's got like a, an Etsy store. We have Daniel Christian, who is like a DJ, <laughs> and he programs Christmas lights. And you could have somebody like Sancho Harker, who not only does beautiful illustrations, but he plays the piano. So my question is, what is a skill or talent that you have that others may not already know about? Uh, Samir? Okay, and speaking of, while well, you said Manuela, I just, and this won't show up on the audio podcast, but oh. Manuela had crocheted little Power Cat logo uh, crochet thingies that she mailed uh, to, to a bunch of us over Christmas. So that's, you know, Seriously. throwing that in there for the video. <laughs> it's lying here. What's mine? So one one which uh, it's probably I discovered during a transition period while I had left Microsoft and before I came back. So there's a period of about um, you know 2014 is when I'd left for my first stint, and I was taking some time off. And uh, I won't go into the whole backstory around there, but uh, writing poetry and connecting with some of the local writers in Seattle was something that. Was in some sense new a bit. It was just helped, started with a way for me to just process my own thoughts and things that were going on. Um, I did have time because I was off work for about six months or so around then. Uh, so that's where, that's where it started. And uh, yeah, I haven't, and I think maybe in 2016, I must have probably written 35 to 40 poems or so. Some of them are published online. Um, I haven't written much at all in the last year, so maybe there's some there's some balance of, you know, what what kind of work I'm doing. I would like to get back and and actually write more, uh, but it is something that I've enjoyed doing. But and I, I particularly enjoyed the community element there as well, being able to go back and you know share some uh, stuff in a kind of safe space with some writer groups in Seattle, and then hearing from others who are sharing work. Uh, in the context of there's this thing called a work in progress open mic night, which I've been, um, uh, which has been really fun to go to. So that's my, uh, that's one of my things that I discovered fairly late, I think, in, in life that that I would think for poetry. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. and small side note on that is I'd written a, a random Power Apps rap which was, again, one of these times where there was just this rhyming poetry stuff going on in my head, um, which kind of had trying to bring these two worlds together, I suppose. Thanks. Was it Ryan Cunningham who had, uh, like, during Christmas or sometime, was it last year, he read out something? Was it him who he wrote it, or... Did he write? I think he I think he okay. wrote that, right? He wrote so, yeah, I mean, like Have type you of geeked thing. out on poetry with him? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. But I feel like, like knowing Ryan, Ryan takes like everything to the, kind of the next next level. So I would, uh, <laughs> I, I think, I'm, yeah. No, we actually nice. have not. But I really enjoyed that. that yeah, we, that was pretty. Cool. 
Yeah. This was the Alan Chai had done a whole like 20, wasn't it yeah, part of that yeah, yeah, series? Yeah. Advent. Good calendar. Right. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. That's right. And Ryan was part of that. Yeah. Cool. So uh, for me, uh, I guess this is something that I would probably be sharing with uh, Brian. So I like photography. I'm probably not as good as uh, Brian. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, uh, I think. I definitely like photography through my DSLR, uh, although it's nice to have your iPhone now, which almost take as good as DSLR, but there is some, uh, there is this kind of, uh, I wouldn't say you, how do I say, describe it? There is a fun part to kind of adjusting everything with your hands manually. Um, and the first time, like when I read about all the ISO and all that kind of stuff, um, initially, it didn't make any sense, but as soon as I started using it, um, it made a lot of sense. And since then, it's been always like I've been learning so much, although I don't do it a lot uh, as I would like it to. But uh, it's definitely something I really enjoy a lot. And um, it's not not just taking photos, but kind of going on these photo walks. It, that also is... Mm -hmm. Another kind of, I would say, a relaxation or even a meditation for me um, because it's just me holding my camera and not talking or anything and just roaming around a place and taking photos. So that's something which I really enjoy. Um, so, yeah, that that's one skill that I have, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Photography, you, you take in the light, right? especially in a place like Seattle. <laughs> you need as much light as you can get. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, my, what about uh, yeah. So everybody here knows uh, I, I do photography, but um, the question is about a talent that you don't know that I do. I, I love in a, in another multiverse. <laughs> it's a common theme for today. Um, I would be into music a lot more. I, I love to whistle. So I, I played violin when I was a kid. But then when I got to middle school, you know, I, I didn't continue it in the electives. Um, so I love to whistle now. It's like an instrument that I carry with me all the time. And I realized by sharing this, I can't share this without you asking me <laughs> to whistle a song. So I'll take requests. I'll take requests. And I could also do happy birthday in case uh, you can't think of one. That way somebody, you could always share this happy birthday song with anybody. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's all do right. that. All right. Hey, glad you reminded me to get some water. Awesome. I hope, I hope the audio didn't clip out because it sometimes does in the recordings. But happy birthday to whoever you're sending this video to. <laughs> nice. And that was really awesome. That was uh, amazing. Uh, I had no idea. The notes in the, like, like, even in the end where it was just not kind of abrupt and it all was really like you, you took it. Yeah, that was pretty good. Is there one more? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll keep that for the afterwards, the appendix maybe. <laughs> Elevation. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, I, I also thought that one thing um, really common, Vivek, you mentioned uh, photography uh, and you know, talking a bit about poetry. I think there's the same element of like getting sort of time away in space. It's what you're noticing things. So it's mm -hmm. less about the, in some ways, it's less about the actual writing or taking the actual taking photos. That's obviously a piece of it but it's about what you notice um, that you're really trying to capture in some way, right? And I I guess, um, so. Yeah, yeah. You, you get in the moment, right? I mean, you kind of enjoy being in it. That's how you know that you like it. It's kind of, it, it can be a talent, but it could be just something that you enjoy doing. Yeah. yeah. So Samir, what question do you have? Yeah, so I was thinking, I mean, as, um, partly related to the topic of poetry, one of my favorite poet, um, poet writers, authors, thinkers is David White. And he lives here in Whidbey Island and he's originally from Ireland. Um, uh, just really fantastic thinker uh, and poet. 
But when, when I've attended a couple of his seminars, one of the things that comes up is he often talks about questions, right? And of course, the theme of this podcast, Vivek, you've been asking questions and we've been going around. But I was going to uh, flip it a bit and maybe, I don't know, in Jeopardy style or something, instead of my question being looking for an answer, I'd be curious about other questions, right? And this is... Uh, from a more the the poetic side, David White thinks of it as he I think he calls it what is the the beautiful question that you're asking yourself right now, uh, and we don't have to go uh, as philosophically deep. <laughs> we can take it where you want it, but the the, the question is um, what what is a question or what are some questions that you're asking these days that might uh, guide I guess your intentions for 2021. And we can so, yeah, start with Vivek. Yeah, so I've definitely put me into a philosophical mode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there are two things which these are some questions I generally ask myself. Um, one is, like, I kind of ask, started asking this recently, but how can I be better today? Um, and that's a question that I keep asking myself, right? And what can I do something which it could be not just, it could be make me feel better. That's one way of looking at it, but also like, how can I do something more today, which um, just brings something good, right? It, it could bring good to me. It could bring good to the community. Uh, just something that could kind of keeps driving me every day, right? So keep asking that myself a lot. Um, and the other question, which I don't know if it ties along with this, but I, I ask this question sometimes, like, I am not even a, s a single dot in this whole universe. So what could I do to kind of have some impact, right? I mean, create some impact. Um, so these are some, like, two questions, I would say. Uh, which I generally, I mean, it's not just 2021, but uh, it's been some things which I generally kind of ask myself to, to make myself a better human being, I would say. Yeah, I, lo I love the juxtaposition of both those, right? It seems like one is, how can I do better today? It has like this immediate action to it, very now today, like almost every day doing things. And then the other one is like, so, you know, it's like in a whole different, a whole different context or level, which is, yeah, how do you as a grain of sand have some sort of impact? And yep. what does that take you to over a much, much longer time horizon in some ways? Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Brian? Brian? So I, I always, I love learning. I love getting other people to love learning. And the questions that I would ask my students is an exercise in figuring out what you know and what you don't know. So the question is, um, what do you know? What do you don't know? And if you know what you don't know, it becomes something that you can know. If you, if you put it in the context of a uh, power platform, right? Learning something like power apps. Well, every time that you hit a hurdle, like uh, I don't know how to get, I don't know how to, I'm stuck making this app, right? Well, if you, if you keep uh, asking questions about the things that you don't know about how to solve that problem, eventually you will get to the answer uh, of, of figuring it out. So know what you don't know uh, is, is my advice for anybody. Um, and to, to Vivek's point, I think it, it's something that's not just uh, a goal for 2021. It's a, a, a nice uh, question to ask yourself um, for all time. Nice. How about you, Sami? <laughs> I thought of a uh, couple that came to mind, like, and it also for me is a bit, I guess, a bit, bit philosophical. But one is, uh, every right now, I feel with everything going on, like, how do I, how do I create space for more unhurried time spent in, I guess, creativity and connection is how I'd frame it. You know, how do I create more space for myself, whether that's time, energy, um, physical space, to have just slower, spend more time in creative, unhurried creative tasks. 
um, was one. The the other that came came to mind was um, somewhat from a uh, metaphorically, what are what are seeds in my life that need more watering, which was this. You know, where do I again? It comes back to where do I want to put more energy a bit? Um, and a third one is when will we be back in a bar with friends, you know, having drinks <laughs> together, man? I'm missing that these days with the, with this COVID situation. So getting out of the 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 philosophical realm, yeah. When when can we when can we all connect in person more? Is I'm curious about that. Nice. Well, that that's something that everyone's looking forward to. Hopefully, I mean, we're seeing some light, but uh, hopefully that's close enough. All right. So that was some really good discussion. Uh, now, for time for the bonus question, which oh, no. <laughs> don't don't worry about it too much. It's it's a simple one, and this came out in a recent tweet as well. The question was, how do you pronounce Microsoft? And I think. You already pronounced it today once, but we'll try to do that again. And I won't, I'll just spell it A-Z-U-R-E. So oh. <laughs> how are you going to pronounce it, Brian? Well, I pronounce it based on uh, Azure from our community. So it's, it's, that's the answer. I'm not going to upset Azure's mom. <laughs> when, uh, when I'm not sure and I can copy Brian, that's the best answer to give. So I'll say Microsoft Azure. Uh, right. But I do sometimes call it Azure as well, I think. And I feel like I go back and forth between Azure and Azure. Feels like Azure is more correct, right? Or we, I'm not sure which is it. Well, as uh, Brian said, we will we'll go with our community member, Azure. Uh, hopefully, I'm pronouncing it right now. But yeah, <laughs> I think uh, I have also used Azure uh, before. And I think that's how Satya Nadella pronounces it. So. We will try to <laughs> see which one's the right, and uh, think they're they're gonna play play that video as well. So, but anyways, uh, so yeah, do we want to? I was Azure too. Nice. So, do we want to end it with one of one more songs from Brian? All right, I'm taking requests. <laughs> My favorite singer it has to be Sia. In fact, the the songs where the singer belts things out. Those are the best ones to whistle. So, who's your favorite? You don't have to pick Sia. Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna go with Vivek's <laughs> suggestion. Brian, it's like, uh, you know, you've got not to be morbid, but if you had one last song that you could you could whistle, oh. what what would it be? Uh, one last song. Oh man, that is that's the actual bonus round for today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love Titanium by Sia. Titanium, right. it's uh. So it is super morbid because it's a song about being bulletproof. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit much. That's that's. Oh, you want to hear it? Yeah, we want to hear it. Yeah, we're waiting for uh, it. Let's see. That's all I'm going to do. It's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Thanks so much uh, for sharing that with us, Brian. So before we end, um, just uh, Brian, if people want to follow you, your content, uh, how can they follow you? Uh, you can find me at Mr. Dang on Twitter, and that's got all the links to my blogs and such. Mm -hmm. Thanks. How about you, Samir? You can find me on Twitter at uh, Samir Bhangar. S A M E E R B H A N G A R. Um, you can look me up on LinkedIn as well. I think there's only one Samir Bhangar as far <laughs> as I know, so it's not that hard to find. All right. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for joining us today. And thank you all for listening to the podcast. Um, all the show notes will be available um, in the description. 
Don't forget to subscribe us on anchor.fm slash rapid power. The podcast is available on all the different platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whichever you want to listen to. Uh, but yeah, thanks again for joining us. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Great discussion. Yeah, thanks for having us, Vivek. It was great. Thank you.